Good morning and welcome to another episode of the latest news from Bali. Hi, I'm Mr. Steve. First of all, I just want to apologise for not doing a video for the last few weeks, but uh, there hasn't been a lot of great news coming out of Bali in the last few weeks, and um, I didn't want to just keep repeating myself, giving latest COVID result updates and thoughts on the COVID situation and when tourists are going to be allowed back, because it's just getting too disheartening. It looks like it could be miles and miles and miles away. Some countries are even talking about 2022 before international t tourism starts again. There has been news coming out of Bali, but nothing that's really sort of caught my eye big time. Sort of news like new partial lockdown in Bali as cases continue to surge. Bali will get vaccine first when it becomes available in, new in Indonesia. A 22-year-old Ukrainian woman injured in a Bali purse snatching operation. And that story's a little bit of a warning about girls on bikes, on their scooters, and having their bags exposed for snatches. More and more of that going on lately, with uh, poverty starting to hurt and kick in. There was the man from Spain that was arrested in Bali after receiving drugs in the mail. Bali officials getting upset over tourists and expats who refuse to wear masks. As you can see from this picture, they're finding them and uh, sometimes just giving them a warning and making them do push-ups, as like they've been doing for months. There was a Frenchman, he was a 48-year-old Frenchman, found dead in a Bali villa. There was a woman found living in a Bali sewer after being missing for eight months. And then there's this scruffy individual, this Russian tourist, found trespassing after, and being deported for overstaying visa by one and a half years. Looks like a nice individual. But two stories did catch my eye. So let's roll the tape and get into them. Mr. Steve! Mr. Steve! So the first story that caught my eye involves the Bali governor, Wayan Costa, the most senior politician in Bali. And as you all are aware, he's been uh, making all the rules, making all the promises, imposing the fines on people not wearing masks. And you may remember a video I did quite recently where he basically called out all the people of Bali for being ill-disciplined and blaming them for the upsurge in COVID-19 cases not ever looking at blaming himself for opening the borders to domestic tourism or anything else. And then this news item comes out that 20 staff from the Bali governor's residence have tested positive for COVID-19. The story reads, 20 staff from the Bali governor's residence have been confirmed to have COVID-19. While Bali governor Wayan Costa has sternly instructed the people to follow health protocols, his own residence has become a new cluster of COVID-19 cases. Governor Costa announced a cluster of COVID-19 at an event in Tabanan on Thursday the 24th of September. I quote, I keep enforcing the people to follow the health protocols like the obligation to wear a mask, physical distancing and washing hands regularly. But from all the protocols, I admit that avoiding a crowd is the most difficult for the people. There are more than 20 people have been confirmed positive with COVID-19, including four of my personal assistants. Two of them have recovered, the others are still quarantined. Costa warned that people do not underestimate what the virus is capable of and that many people have lost their lives. And just to rub salt into the wound, two days later, Bali governor's wife has tested positive for COVID-19. Unbelievable. The other story that caught my eye, quite frankly, made me quite pissed off. The headline reads, 4,400 social media users are going to be invited to Bali for a promotion costing 20 billion Indonesian rupiah. That's right, 4,400 social media users to and they're going to be brought over to promote safe tourism on the island. The social media users will promote cleanliness, health, safety and environment-based tourism while in Bali for the new campaign. 
head of the Bali Tourism Agency, Putu Astawa, has said that this promotion program called We Love Bali will spend 1.35 million US dollars. We will invite them for a three day, two nights to explore Bali. Mm, not much time. This program has been initiated by Indonesia Tourism and Creative Economy Minister and will run from October until November. Now, it's just incredible to me that um, they're going to spend this amount of money. If you don't know about Bali, then you're probably living on a different planet. But to promote it in terms of health, when things aren't looking that great at the moment, just seems completely irresponsible. And as a lot of Balinese have been saying online, it's been uh, going a bit crazy. That 1.35 million US dollars could be put to far better use than um, spending it on Instagram users. And what Instagrammer or YouTuber is going to take up an offer like that three days and two nights? They're going to be escorted all over the place, forced to um, promote the island in a very, very positive light. And uh, it's kind of a, what we call in the YouTube community a bit sluttish to do that sort of stuff. But anyway, it just caught my eye and uh, really pissed me off. Anyway, that's your Bali news update for this week from Mr. Steve. Really appreciate you watching it. Give us a hand promoting the channel. If you'd like to hear and see more news coming out of Bali, make sure you click that subscription button. And uh, if you click the bell, you even get an email when I upload a new video. It all helps. All, if you can give it a like, everything helps. So from Mr. Steve, I'll catch you soon.